Hello, in this episode we're going to be looking at how to synchronize nearby player appearance. So this is connected to the previous post where we've synchronized nearby player's motion. And now what we're also going to be doing is synchronizing their appearance, right? So uh, previously we were able to log into the game and see other players around us, but they all look the same. So now we're actually going to start connecting the information of their appearance with the server and uh, rendering the correct information on the screen. So. Um, we're going to be doing this async, right? So um, for motion, we're going to be pulling the data quite quickly. So at the moment it's set to every 100 milliseconds, potentially it might be even faster. Uh, but synchronizing the appearance, it doesn't have to be as fast, right? So we don't want to bundle that with emotion so that we, you know, overload the servers and st such. So we're going to have an async request. So at the moment I'm setting that to 0.5 seconds, but you know, we can even make it even slower or faster as we desire. So uh, the point is that it's async and we'll be in full control of how it works. So let's get started with the demo. So what we're going to look at in the demo is basically log it into the two different characters. So we've got the two clients over here. So we've got the character selection screen. So we'll log in as character one on one screen and character two on the other. So you can see the appearance is different here. So we want to make sure that that appearance is synchronized between the two clients. And that's basically it, right? So maybe you saw, but it basically flickered between the default one to uh, what is the correct appearance, right? Uh, so obviously we'll be able to uh, modify and fix that as well. So basically when you log in, uh, or rather when you start uh, capturing other nearby players motion uh, you draw the proxy character but you can keep that proxy character invisible and then obviously when it comes to the synchronization point uh, which is 0.5 seconds uh, we'll go ahead synchronize it and make that pawn visible so that's what we're going to look at here so as you can see uh, the two uh, characters are synchronized as expected don't worry about shading and stuff like i just need to rebuild lighting and all that stuff uh, so we'll be able to uh, fix that up and yeah, that's basically what we're going to be looking at um, doing in this episode, synchronizing the appearance of the characters. So let's get started with the code. So the main code is actually implemented inside the uh, player character blueprints. So basically now we need a new graph for synchronizing the appearance. So I've renamed the old one to um, specifically synchronizing the player's motion because we want to do those two things separately. We don't want to uh, put too much logic into any one graph. And likewise, uh, as I mentioned before, we don't want to put too much content in any one API request. Like th those requests become too heavy and they'll actually overload the servers, right? So uh, it's better to keep them async. Obviously, if I was to uh, request to synchronize the appearance every 100 milliseconds, that's again, not very good, but we don't expect the appearance information to change that often. So that's why we're able to synchronize it less frequently. Okay, so basically when uh, we created our new uh, graph, uh, we can go ahead and create an entry point for it. So here I created a custom event for uh, setting up uh, the, the timer, which basically makes this a, an async request, right? So it's really simple to make async um, functions inside Unreal, especially with blueprints. Um, this is just one way of doing it. So uh, this works perfectly fine. So we can go ahead and do that. Uh, and then all we have to do really is um, basically make an API call from the server to get the appearance information for any characters around us. So that's what's happening over here. So basically, uh, we enter this uh, custom function and here we basically check, is there any uh, nearby players? Because look, if we don't have any players nearby, then we don't need any API calls at all, right? So um, we get this list populated by the get players motion. Right, so if there's no motion around us, then clearly there's no players. So therefore we don't need to synchronize any appearance. So that's what we do here. We do a quick check. Is there any players near, uh, nearby to us? And if there are, we start making a JSON request uh, to get the character's appearance. So let's have a look at the call. So uh, we've got a function, uh, an API call to get characters by name. So you can see uh, this is the URL, it's a get request. Um, and the query parameters is basically names where you specify the character name. So we're able to uh, do a bulk request where basically we, we specify, you know, get me all of these characters appearance. And then that's what it's going to respond back with. So uh, here we requested for two, uh, two different characters and we get all of this information. So this is actually account characters, but the account character structure contains the appearance information. So that's exactly what we want here. So uh, this is the uh, request that we're mimicking. So you can see uh, it's currently working. And likewise, if I remove one of the characters, for instance, 
uh, it's only going to send back the one, right? So you only get back the information that you request. So uh, that's what this one will do over here. So basically, uh, construct JSON request that this is this is using the VA REST uh, plugin. Um, promote the uh, return value to a variable. Uh, here we basically request the nearby uh, player's data and the keys. So the keys are are the well, basically, they're the player names, right? So uh, we strategically use the, the player name as the key because they're unique. And uh, then we just want to construct the, the player's path. So for that, we created a function. So it's always good practice to generate your URLs via some uh, functions. Um, this is uh, for refactoring purposes, right? So uh, we haven't, for instance, used get base host uh, in the past, but we really should because once you've published this into production, uh, you know, you don't want to be changing all of the URLs. Uh, you just want to change it in one place and propagate that throughout. So that's what I've done here. So uh, get base host uh, will just return you the local host at the moment. And obviously, if we push this to production, you change that to whatever you, you need it to be. And then the get player character path. So as you can see here, I've just basically added the uh, player characters and the names part here. So that's basically uh, extracted from this URL over here. So uh, this character, or rather the names here, um, is a CSV format, so a comma separated value format. Uh, so basically I can take in an array of player names and then you're able to join string array. So what that does is basically takes your array and puts a separator in between them. So in our case, it's just a comma. Uh, and this provides us a comma separated value for uh, appending onto our base URL. So uh, we're able to quite neatly generate the URL that we want here. Okay, so going back to here, all we need to do is then apply the URL, which, uh, you know, it's an async request or rather like it will await for this request to be complete before uh, we will uh, call the completed function with the result. Um, and once it's completed, we again just want to extract the account characters. So again, uh, you can see the payload uh, from the API over here, so account characters. This gives you an array of data, so an array of objects, which are these objects here. So we already created a structure for this, so this is the account character structure. And for each one uh, of those items in the array, we want to, as an object, convert it to the account character response. So we've looked at this in the past, but basically um, it, it just simply iterates through each one of these objects inside and um, creates the unreal structure for us to work with right so it says get object field appearance information so this is a, another nested object so we convert that to character appearance which again extracts things like race gender hairstyle etc so again all we're doing is basically uh, iterating over each one of the fields inside so that's how we um get the account character response, which contains the appearance information. Um, and what we have to do is then populate the nearby player's data. So again, the a nearby player's data, so let's open up. Nearby, uh, I think it's called character data. Okay, um, so we um, put account character inside the structure in the previous episode. So the purpose was to hold the structure that we've now extracted. Okay, so remember the um, the key uh, was the name. So now we're able to find the um, the character that we're iterating over through this array. Right. So for each one of the responses that we obtain, uh, this is a structure which contains the name over here. So we know we must have this character name inside our nearby player characters because that's how we generated the URL over here. Right. So uh, we basically said. Um, get me all of the keys from here and then create the URL using those names. So therefore we must have all of those names in our responses, but we don't know what order they're in. So that's why we have to uh, get them using this find method, right? So uh, we get the account character response. We have the name. So we iterate over each one and we say, let's find the corresponding player in our nearby players data structure. Once we found them, we, we simply set the members inside that uh, array, updating the account character field. So uh, this is not something that we set previously. So now we will set and continuously update it every 0.5 seconds. And then we set that right back inside uh, this array, right? So 
um, when you use this find function, uh, it doesn't actually find by reference, which would have been good in this case, but it actually finds by value. So it returns you a copy of that value. So when you actually update the, this response, it doesn't seem to uh, update the um, values inside here. So that's why we have to just add that back in. Uh, I didn't see it having a uh, find by value where you're able to uh, set the, the members in the character data. Okay, so basically we now took our nearby players data. We uh, got all of the appearance information and we've updated the account character object inside there. This account character contains the appearance information. So all we have to do now is basically say, well, as soon as you, you've finished updating all of them, uh, apply appearance onto the proxies. So again, we've uh, done all the preparation in the past where basically when we did the motion, we populated um, all the relevant information inside the structure. So the structure contains the proxy character reference. So all we have to do is go for each one of those. So each um, item inside the nearby players data, and we take the, uh, so the character data, we break that to get the proxy character. And we say to the proxy character, set the appearance information based on the account uh, character that we've just received from our server. And then we tell the proxy character to resolve all appearance. So this same functionality was used part of the create and select character screens. So we're simply reusing all of those uh, pieces of data to essentially resolve the appearance. And that was actually it, right? So um, that's all we needed to do. We, we get an entry point. Uh, we basically set up a timer so that after this call, every 0.5 seconds, this just gets automatically called. So you can see it's looping over there. Uh, so every 0.5 seconds, we get the uh, res uh, results from the server, uh, which contains the account character information, which uh, importantly contains the name of the character as well as the character's appearance. Uh, we then update the nearby player's data structure with this new information. And then we iterate over each one of the proxy characters inside the nearby player's data, updating the appearance struct inside the proxy and then telling them to resolve all appearance. So the last bit, all we needed to do is basically hook up the event over here. So you can see me adding the set appearance sync event at the end of us creating the WebSocket. So you didn't have to go in here, so we can actually put it into something like a construction script. So we could just um, add it to the end of here. Maybe that actually makes more sense, to be honest, uh, to, just to keep things um, separated. Uh, you know, feel free to add that. As long as you just reference that call, you know, you can put it on begin play, for instance, for this character. Um, simply because when there are no players around you, you're not going to make any random requests to the server. So we do actually check, you know, do we have nearby players? So obviously, if this is not running, that, that list is not going to be populated. So you're not going to be making random calls to the server. Uh, and that's it. So just again, let's have a quick look at the demo. So again, you can see me logging into character one over here. So let's try a different character here. So a completely different character. So you can see the character information is again, synchronized between the two servers. Um, so one of the next things perhaps I'll do is start implementing some zoom functionality or, you know, some smoother gameplay. Maybe I'll uh, look at uh, making better error correction between uh, the servers for the motion pieces. So we'll see. Um, but that's it for this episode. So best of luck. Any questions, let me know. And I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye.